let me uh, give you an outline about what would be the shear stress problems, what kind of questions we have in shear stress problems. Basically, we cover shear stress problems in three sections, in three lectures. In our lecture today, we talk about how to calculate shear stresses in simple beams, like a rectangular shape or a circular shape. And we focus on how to calculate Q in these kind of problems. So it's reviewing statics before, that we have learned before. In the lecture number 18, we talk about shear stress in thin walled members, which are the elements shown here. And in the lecture after that, we talk about the built-up members, which are basically the elements that are built by combining different sections together. So for built-up members, we will discuss about how to use glue, nails, or bolts to build up sections and make combined sections. All right, so today we just talk about this part. First, the unbalanced force is calculated from this equation, delta mq over i. So unbalanced force or balancing force is equal to change in the moment divided by i multiplied by one parameter, which we call that q. And the value of shear stress is calculated from this equation, vq over it. Everything here is known but q. v is shear force, i is moment of inertia, T is the thickness of the section, and Q is a parameter which is sometimes tricky for many students. This parameter is called the first moment of area. We have learned about that before in statics. Q is the first moment of area. The first moment of area is calculated like this. It's integral of Y dA. And for arbitrary shape, as shown here, we can use this equation. This is the general form. We don't use that usually, but I just wanted to give you the general form of the equation for calculating Q. So for determining this, we need to first determine where is the point of interest. Consider that the point of interest is here, this green point. And we need to determine that integral for the area above that uh, point. So we cut that section by a line that is parallel to the axis of interest and passes through that point and consider the entire area and calculate uh, integral for that part. For rectangular shape, as shown here, we can use a simplified form, which is simply A times D. But what are these parameters? Let's zoom into this shape. First, we need to see what is the point at which we want to determine shear stress at. Let's consider this is the point. This green point shows the point at which you want to determine stress. We need to cut this structure from that point parallel to the axis of interest, like this. And once we cut that, we consider the area above that line. And A is area of that subsection, which is shown in purple here and D is distance of centroid of that subsection to the centroid of the entire section. One point that is very important here is that Q changes by the location of the point of interest, the location of that green point. So if we move that green point up or down, the value of Q changes. This is not the same for moment of inertia. Moment of inertia is calculated for the entire section. But this one is calculated for a certain point. All right, now let me make the section a bit more complicated. We call that combined section, like this. How can I calculate Q for this combined section? To calculate Q for this combined section, I simply use sigma form of the previous equation. So we split the structure into simpler parts. Then we calculate sum of A times D. A and D are the same as what we defined before. So let me show those parameters here. Consider the point of interest is located at the web at this point, at this location. We cut that section uh, through that point parallel to the axis of interest and consider the entire area above that. But here, the entire area above that is not simply a rectangle. But I can divide that into two sub 
rectangles as shown here, section 1 and 2. Then we can define area for these two subsections as shown here, and we can define D for each of these two subsections separately. So D1 is distance of that red point to the centroid of the intersection. That red point shows the centroid of that subsection. And D2 is distance of centroid of the second subsection to the centroid of the intersection. Does that make sense? All right. Q has some interesting properties. Let us discuss those properties. First, look at this shape. Consider that we want to determine how much is Q for this shape at this point, at point A. Remember that we know Q changes by the location of that point. How much is the area if I cut this uh, beam passing through this parallel to the x-axis? Zero. Distance of that to the bottom is 100. So Q would be zero. Okay? Now let's consider this point. This point located 30 millimeter below the top portion of the beam or 70 millimeter above the centroid. Okay? To determine Q for that, we cut this beam like this and we consider the entire area of that purple shape. How much is the area of this purple shape? It's 30 times the width of this, which is 100. And how much is distance of the centroid to the centroid of the intersection? That would be 70 plus half of 30, which is 85 millimeter. And if I do the calculation, the value of Q for this shape would be A times D, which is 255,000 millimeter cubed. So the value has increased from zero. Now let's move down and consider this point. In this case, the area has increased, but dimension or the D has decreased. Now it's 50 millimeter. But the product of these two, if we do the calculation, increased. So Q for a point located at the centroid is 50. 500,000 millimeter cubed compared to 255 that we had before. All right, now let's move on further. I'm going to consider another point here at this point. This point is 30 millimeter above the bottom part of this beam. So it is kind of mirror of the previous point that we had before, point B. So to calculate Q for this, we again cut that and consider the entire area above that. Area has increased, D decreased to 15 millimeter. And if I product A and D, <coughs> I will get 255,000. So the value of Q has decreased from that point. And surprisingly, the value of Q for this point is equal to the value of Q that we had for his siblings at this point. Now let me consider the same point, but instead of considering the area above that line, let me consider the area below that line and see how we can calculate that. The calculation is shown here. Area would be 30 times 100, as we had before. Distance now would be negative 85 because that's below the line, and Q would be the same. So what do we learn here? For calculating Q, you can consider either the area above that line or below that line. That should give you the same absolute value. There will be change on the sign, but the absolute value would be the same. Now let me consider the very bottom part, and the very bottom part has another sibling on the top which had zero value, and for this point again we get zero value. Okay, now among all these four, five points, A, B, C, D, and E. Which one has the largest uh, Q? If you look at the distribution of the moment of area as shown here, it has zero value on the top and on the bottom and has the maximum value at the centroid. Stress distribution equation is this one, VQ over IT. V is shear force, I is moment of inertia, T is thickness, and Q is the first moment of area. All these parameters are not depending on the location of the point of interest, but Q. So all these parameters are constant in a section, 
but Q depends on the point of interest. And we know that Q is maximum on centroid and zero on the top and on the bottom. So the same is true for shear stress. Shear stress is maximum on the centroid and it's zero on the top and on the bottom. It's opposite to what we had before in bending stress problems. Do you remember the bending stress problems? It had zero value at the centroid and maximum on the top and on the bottom. So let me review some of these important facts. First, shear stress is maximum at the neutral axis at the centroid. It's zero on the top and on the bottom. And we know that the maximum normal stress caused by bending is opposite to what we got in the shear stress. Already, let me solve a problem to understand the concept better. 